Kitchen. Electricians are skilled in the installation, repair, and maintenance of electrical systems. Being an electrician is a delicate and often dangerous occupation. Only highly skilled and trained professionals should work on any electrical systems. A great amount of equipment and machinery is powered by electricity. Any downtime, time when the equipment does not operate due to a problem, is very expensive. Skilled electricians keep downtime to a minimum by keeping electrical systems in good repair. Before you work on any electrical circuit, you must be sure to lock out the main switch. Be sure to use a padlock, and you have the only key. Tag the equipment to be serviced accordingly. This procedure is an OSHA standard, commonly referred to as lockout tagout. You must wear proper personal protective equipment. PPE, including insulated safety shoes, non-conductive safety helmet, and eyewear with side shields. If there is any chance of contacting a live wire, you must also wear rubber gloves. Do not wear rings, ID bracelets, watches, or any other metal jewelry. Use only non-conducting ladders. Be sure to have a plan for your work. The National Electrical Code NEC specifies most electrical work. Unless you are thoroughly familiar with NEC's latest revision, you should follow the plans or drawings of an expert. All materials and equipment installed must meet the requirements of a recognized testing laboratory. Underwriters Laboratories Inc. UL, and Factory Mutual FM, are two of the largest certifying organizations. A UL or FM mark appears on the approved item or label. EMT Bender An EMT bender, like the one shown here, is used for bending electrical metallic tubing. It is also called a thin wall conduit bender. Conduit is defined as bonded electrical wiring, true or false. That is not correct. Conduit is pipe or tubing that holds and protects electrical wires. Most conduit must be bent before it is used in electrical work. Conduit is bent to turn corners or fit around other conduit, gas, water, or steam pipes, posts, beams, or door and window openings. Bends in EMT must be made without damaging the tubing. Practice will make this possible. The inside diameter of the tubing should not be reduced. The NEC specifies the minimum bend radius for each conduit size. Benders for hand bending come in different sizes for half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch EMT. Each has a different radius of curvature. This picture shows a half inch EMT bender in use. Most benders have a permanently cast arrow to mark one end of the curve. Most benders are one-piece castings with no moving parts, but some have a movable hook. A plant electrician should be good at bending conduit and knowing where bends must be made. Most benders have marks that make it easy for the user to determine in advance the length of stubs and the distance between bends. The typical EMT bender has a groove that holds the conduit so it can be bent to the correct radius for the particular conduit size. The side wall of the groove keeps the bend from flattening too much. Using the footstep allows you to exert maximum force with minimum effort. The inside of the shaft is threaded for attaching a handle. You can make a smooth bend with just one sweep of the bender. To do so, place the bender at the proper mark on the tube. The mark shows where the bend will be made. The bender and the tube should rest on the floor. Put one foot on the footstep and stand on the tube with the other foot as shown here. Before you make the bend, make sure the bender is still on the mark. Get a firm grip on the handle and pull the bender toward you 
while you press down on the footstep. A steady swing of the handle and the downward pressure of the foot cause the tubing to bend to any desired angle. Exposed thin wall conduit installations that end in junction boxes, wireways, and electrical enclosures require an offset bend before they enter the enclosure. This drawing shows a conduit entering a junction box. Offsets of one half and three quarter inch can be made with an EMT bender. You can make the correct offset by trial and error using an EMT bender, but the offset bender shown here allows you to make the correct offset on the first attempt. To use the offset bender, place the thin wall conduit into the tool with the bender arm in the up position. After positioning the conduit, push the lever down as far as it will go. Pull the lever up to release the conduit. Offset benders are made for one half inch and three quarter inch EMT. Correcting Knocked Over Stubs The cutoff end of a conduit run is called a stub, which is found where the conduit exits from concrete for connecting. A stub can be bent accidentally before the connection is made. You can straighten bent conduit with an EMT bender, as shown here. Place the handle of the bender over the bent end of the stub. Bend it back with one sweeping motion. This will remove most of the kink. Notice how this drawing shows a knocked over stub being straightened to the correct position. If a kink remains, drive a bullet nosed drift pin of proper length into the tube past the kinked section. The tube should become round again. This conduit sizing tool is used for straightening or restoring thin wall conduit ends. This tool can be used on either one half inch or three quarter inch EMT. Bending rigid conduit. Special benders are used for bending one half, three quarter and one inch rigid or heavy wall conduit. These benders are called hickeys, like the one shown here. It does not make sweeping bends in one motion like the EMT bender. Rigid conduit is bent in segments. To use the hickey, first place the conduit in the tool and bend it slightly. Then move the hickey a short distance and make another slight bend. Continue until you have made the desired bend. As the size of the conduit increases, so does the effort needed to bend the conduit. It is harder to bend rigid conduit than it is to bend thin wall. This picture shows a mechanical bender. It is used for bending half inch to one and a half inch rigid conduit and two inch thin wall conduit. It has a fixed shoe. Some benders have interchangeable shoes. They can bend other sizes of conduit. It is almost impossible to bend conduit larger than two inches in diameter by hand, so you must use a different tool. What is this tool called? Portable segment bender, portable hickey bender, portable hydraulic bender. That is correct. The portable hydraulic bender is used to bend larger conduit. Position the conduit in the frame unit inside the supports. An up and down motion on the handle of the pump forces hydraulic fluid into the ram, bending the conduit. The bending shoe attached to the cylinder in the ram moves forward. As it moves, it pushes and bends the conduit. Pressure exerted by the ram may reach 10,000 psi. The hydraulic bender can bend conduit up to 6 inches in diameter. Each model has a certain capacity range. One model will not necessarily handle the complete range of sizes. However, if you move the conduit supports and change bending shoes, a different size conduit can be bent. The bender shown here is a one-shot hydraulic bender. 
Benders for long radius bends are called segment benders. They bend a segment of conduit, then are shifted to another point to make another part of the bend. This continues until the bend is finished. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions closely when you use a power bender. Assembling rigid conduit. Pipe wrenches, chain wrenches, dies, taps, and other tools used for regular pipe work are also used with rigid conduit. Threads cut on the ends of conduit are tapered at the rate of three-quarter inch per foot. Always ream the conduit after cutting it, but before threading to remove any burrs. Conduit systems are grounded, which makes them safe to use. Assembling rigid conduit. Pipe wrenches, chain wrenches, dies, taps, and other tools used for regular pipe work are also used with rigid conduit. Threads cut on the ends of conduit are tapered at the rate of three-quarter inch per foot. Always ream the conduit after cutting it, but before threading to remove any burrs. Conduit systems are grounded, which makes them safe to use with electrical equipment and raceways. Raceways are channels for loosely holding electrical wires in buildings. Never use a pipe compound or any other coating on conduit threads. True or false. That is correct. A coating or compound on the threads acts as an insulator. This can result in an open grounding circuit and the possibility of electrical shock. Rigid conduit fittings are threaded to receive the conduit. Sheet metal junction boxes are not threaded. To connect rigid conduit to a sheet metal box, a lock nut is fitted to the conduit. It is then inserted into a hole in the box. A bushing is attached to the end of the conduit and tightened. Knockout punches. Many sheet metal enclosures have pre-punched holes which receive conduit, conduit fittings, and cable connectors.